In British Columbia's northern Rockies, the town of Tumbler Ridge is at the epicenter of a fight over foreign labor. I think it's a debacle. I don't buy that we can't find people. I, I, I think in this case we didn't look for people, and, and the whole thing was a scam. Tumbler Ridge is a quintessential one-industry town, built 30 years ago to sell coal to Japan. When commodity prices crashed in the 90s, the place emptied out and homes were auctioned off. But then, prices and the mines bounced back, and China's steel mills became the hungry new customer for the region's coal. Uh, you know, like for, for Tumbler Ridge, for BC, for Canada, it's an awesome opportunity as far as I'm concerned. But in documents filed in federal court, two BC unions are arguing there is no evidence of a shortage of qualified miners. They allege HD Mining's efforts to find suitable Canadian workers was a sham. Trevor Willemson says he wanted one of those jobs. He now works in one of Tumbler Ridge's open pit mines, but thought his years of mining experience put him in a good position to make the transition to underground work. I figured the opportunity for me to start it, to learn to be trained, would have been perfect for it. What happened? Nothing. I had an interview and lasted about 10 minutes. Um, other than that, there was nothing that followed through with it. He no, says uh, when he asked about the premium for working underground, he says now. the company didn't have an answer. There are bonuses to get people to go underground because it's such more, it's so, of a, so much more of a high-risk job that that was one thing that keened in my head, like extra money, but they didn't have any answers for that. And that struck you as odd? Yeah, that was the other thing too. Like, it's, To me, they didn't have any answers for any of those kind of questions. In this particular mine, uh, 315 Canadians applied for jobs. Not one of them qualified. And then if you look at the qualifiers, you had to speak Mandarin to get a job there. Well, it kind of narrows it down to a pretty small percentage of Canadians. The company says Mandarin was not a requirement for the 200 underground jobs. But after Ottawa okayed using temporary workers, then the postings in China did include Mandarin. The proposed mine is about half an hour outside of town, and on a very snowy day, its Chinese managers and Canadian contractors took us out for a tour. I'll open it up. That's point zero of the underground mine. This is the very beginning of it right here. Very beginning. You come back in two years' time, you'll be able to drive down there on one of their little carts and see it all. all right. It's pretty wild, man. Most of Canada's coal mines are open pit operations, but at HD Mining's Murray River project, the coal is a kilometre below the surface. So the plan is to use a technique called long walling to peel it away. And the company says there are simply no workers in Canada trained to do that. Underground workers here will earn between $25 and $40 an hour. That's about 30% less, claims the unions, than the Canadian industry standard. People want to play the race card and say, well, you're just being racist. We're not. We're saying that if we need Canadian, or sorry, workers for Canadian mines, after you've exhausted the education route and, and looking for people in our country, then allow people to immigrate and become full Canadians. These men won't have that opportunity. HD is not sponsoring the workers to stay here past two years. Ottawa is now reviewing the temporary foreign workers program as a result of this case and other complaints across the country about misusing workers from abroad.